Hey everybody, so I'm going to show you a handy method here today on how to automatically switch between two different camera angles at preset intervals while editing a multi-camera session in Premiere. Now unfortunately there's nothing inherent in Premiere right now that will automate camera switching, so we kind of have to do a workaround ourselves, but it's really not that big of a deal. So this is something that works great when you have a long interview, and the one I'm going to show you here is close to two hours long. And this is great for when you want to switch between angles just for the sake of variety, and you're not really too worried about the timing of the switching. So the first thing we do is take our clips and lay them out on the timeline. Now for this interview, it was shot with only one camera in 1080, but the deliverable is going to be on a DVD, so we obviously have lots of room to zoom in and reframe and fake a second camera. Now if you have something that's going to be delivered to the web, then that's likely going to be mastered in 720 or 1080, meaning you're definitely going to want to shoot 4K, and then that way you could zoom in on the second camera angle without losing any resolution. So for this interview in particular, we're going to duplicate the clips and place them on a second track and then reframe those to make the second camera. Once we do that, we go up into effect controls and we adjust the scale and the positioning for the first clip and we create the framing for the second camera. We then right click, copy, and then highlight the rest of the clips on that track and paste the attributes. And there we go. So now we just have to go into the effect controls of each individual clip and modify each one to account for the changing headroom. So what we would usually do now is highlight both of these tracks and then make a nest, right click to make sure the multicam is enabled, and go up into our program monitor and select multi-camera and then we would basically let it play and click which camera angle we want to use, or you could set up hotkeys to switch between camera angles. And then you'd have to watch this back in real time, or you could speed up the playback and do it that way, but it's all still relatively slow compared to the method I'm going to show you. Okay, so what we do now is create what I call the teeth layer, and this layer is going to basically chomp down into track 2 and bite out 20 second intervals all at once across the entire track. So we make the teeth layer out of an adjustment layer. So we make one of those, and we open it up in the source monitor, and we take 20 seconds of that and place it into track 3. We then start copying the clips to make larger copied sections until we have a fairly long section, and then we just paste that in track 3 all the way to the end of the sequence. We highlight all the clips in the track, move it all down onto track 2 to take a big chomp out of the footage, and then move them back up into track 3, and there you go. You saved a lot of time, or maybe I saved you a lot of time. You're welcome. And yes, this can work for more than two cameras. So for instance, if we had a third camera, we would place those clips on another track, select the adjustment layers, right click to select the duration, and in this case we're going to set it to 10 seconds. Then we're going to chomp that layer back down to track 2. Now yes, you can add more cameras, but it's going to get very tedious and slightly complicated. If we use five cameras, for example, and let's say you wanted to switch your camera every 10 seconds, then we'll need one 10 second adjustment layer segment placed every 50 seconds. That's 50 seconds because it's 5 cameras times 10 seconds for each camera. You'll then select the entire track of adjustment layer segments and then manually start chomping into these video tracks like so to create a staggered effect for the video. Mind you that you need to be pixel perfect when placing these or else the time on each camera won't be exact and you'll then run into accidentally creating gaps in the sequence. But you can take care of those by using the go to next gap in sequence command and patching them up. And that's it. I hope this helped you out and uh, do that whole like and subscribe thing and check out my other videos. Thanks.